Hey there, friends, and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White, and today, something super, super exciting and different and fun and unique. So back at SRGCon 2022 in April, which for those of you who don't know, it's the Strange Rebel Gaming convention, all digital and a celebration of this community, and all thanks to Strange Rebel Gaming's Patreon community, which I am so grateful for. If you want to learn more about that and the SRG Discord, which it's attached to as a reward, and we play games together every month, you can click the link in the description below to learn more about it. So we were lucky enough at SRGCon to speak with Jennifer Hale. I am so stoked about this because every time I have listened to her speak, especially in her podcast, I just felt like she has so much wisdom and light and inspiration to share. And I'm so grateful that she decided to share it with us at SRGCon. She is, of course, a legendary voice actress and, I mean, award-winning, Guinness World Record holder, like incredible, but she's also one of those multi-hyphenates, talented at everything types. And um, I do give a little bio and intro at the beginning of this talk so you can learn more about her, but she's incredible. And um, I really felt like the content of this interview, like people really needed it, you know? I know I definitely did. So it's so many good tidbits of amazingness and I hope you love it. Enjoy. Welcome back, SRG Con. I am very excited for this next panel, Inspiration for Motivation, with a very special guest, Jennifer Hale. Welcome in, Jennifer. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here, Brian. I really appreciate it. We are truly so, so honored. When I was able to announce this yesterday, the whole chat just lit up. They could not believe it. <laughs> That's cool. That's very cool. So I'm sure everyone here knows who Jennifer Hale is, but if you don't, um, let me tell you a little bit more about her. Award-winning voice actor Jennifer Hale has been dubbed a kind of Meryl Streep of the form and holds the Guinness World Record for the most female video game voices. Seriously, that is a true fact. <laughs> She can be heard in Halo, World of Warcraft, Baldur's Gate, Metroid Prime, Metal Gear Solid, Spider-Man, Bioshock Infinite, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, to name a few. In games loved by SRG, of course, she voices Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect series and Ash in Overwatch, which I play quite a bit. Yeah, I love um, And she was very recently nominated for a BAFTA for the role of Rivet in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You just got back, right? Like I a couple did. weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. I think, well, yeah, I want to say 14 days ago because I just got a call that uh, we're released from our quarantine requirements. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. yes. She also voices iconic characters such as Cinderella and has performed in hundreds of animated movies and shows. I don't even know if hundreds really covers it. Um, SRG, of course, will know her well as the voice of Avatar Kyoshi in Avatar The Last Airbender. She also has an incredible podcast, a super inspiring podcast called The Art of Money. And she wrote and released two songs in two songs in 2020. Yes, I did. I've got a few two more songs, online, but they're not out yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to them because the ones that I heard were simply marvelous. Yeah, wonderful you. to listen to. So much. And she also created Skills Hub, where new and professional voice actors alike can work with coaches to hone their craft and learn new skills. Mm -hmm. Because apparently there is nothing you cannot do. <laughs> oh, well, it takes support. You have to partner with the right people. That's one thing I will say. You know, I understand that well. Yeah, community is everything. I used to beat myself up because I, I wasn't accomplishing enough. That's just a silly thing to do anyway. But I realized one of the keys for me, you know, because we all have different personalities, different, well, different ways that our brains function and ideas never stop coming for me. They never stop mm -hmm. coming. But it's that middle part where I just suffer. <laughs> the middle part of actually getting them done. And I'm super blessed in Skills Hub. My sister, Karen Diella, is our integrator. And she's the one who says, stop, <laughs> put it on the ideas list. I hear it. It's been born. We will get to it. Here's, we need this from you today. We need this from you this week. You know, wow, then, that is a blessing. It's such a blessing. And then our partner, Bill, who is a brilliant developer, like you have to partner with good people and with my songs even. You know, um, my first song that I released in 2020 called Never, Michelle Bobak actually helped me bring that to life and actually get it produced. And the second song I wrote for, uh, co-wrote for Sea of Stars, I partnered with Todd Herfindahl on that one to help me. Like finding people who can fill in the blanks and help me refocus. Cause when you have a, you know, a decent stream of ideas, you're always getting squirreled 
but you're not oh, yes oh, yeah and it's not in a careless way it's not a careless thing like we're so i'm so lucky that inspiration comes it just does throw you off track so you have to having those support things to put you back on track are so powerful i i really relate to that i mean even just srg con this event i i couldn't possibly have done any portion of it alone. Um, we, we say with pride that SRG con was made by the community for the community. And that's because pretty much everyone here has contributed something to it. That's what makes it just that's a really, really special event. Um, cool. so we're so glad to have you. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. Um, here. my first question is this given your bio, your list of accolades, you do seem like an incredibly driven person. Have you always been that way? Yes, I have been very driven my entire life. You know, and it, that's a really interesting equation. And it, it, it quite literally broke down for me, I want to say, a year and a half ago. Um, and it's, it's like a bank, you know, you go in that bank, and you make withdrawals and withdrawals and withdrawals, and you never fill the bank, you go back one day, and you're suddenly bankrupt, there's nothing in the bank. And I hit that wall pretty hard. And um, but there's so many aspects to being driven. There's driven by the creativity, you know, there's driven by the excitement and the appetite. And then there's driven by the voice that says not enough, not good enough, keep going, keep going. There's also driven by fear. <gasps> what if it all goes away? What if there's no money? You know, all that negative side of driven too. So I got the chance to kind of unpack all that and, and reprogram, if you will, certain sections of it so that driven is from a different place now, which is, it, it's, you know, like any process of growing and stretching, it, it's not roses and unicorns. It is, it isn't, is it? Thorns <laughs> and poo. And it's, you know, you just do your best and you, and the life is messy, but we don't, I don't know, for myself, I find I learned so much more when I come out the other side of those times, I really love the easy times and I really love the great times. And I definitely learn in those as well. But sometimes the the bit of duress, you know, <laughs> like can teach you a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all need those, those times where we're kind of thrust out of our comfort zone yes. as uncomfortable as it is. Yes. It is sometimes necessary. Um, but I love what you said about how, how being driven, how motivation can come from great places yep. can come from beautiful places and can come from dark places. Yep. I feel like a lot of people don't realize that there is that tension there, that sometimes you can be motivated by fear or anxiety or anger with yourself, not feeling good enough. Yep. A lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that. And sometimes it makes you go, well, if it makes you get stuff done, is it such a bad thing? <laughs> It depends. It depends on your constitution. It depends on how bad it is. Um, you know, it's like families. If you grow up and it's a stereotype, but my, my friend Rena Romano jokes about his family and everyone's like this, you know, and you can grow up in that family and you're fine with people screaming around you, but maybe you're the kid who was really not meant for that family. So you just feel like everyone's so mad all the time. You know, it's, it's individual for everybody, right? But for me, I have a I have a low ability to um, tolerate toxins in any form, whether they're things I eat, environments I find myself in. Uh, my system just dysregulates like that, and I can I can white knuckle it, dude. I can white knuckle through anything, anything. Like you, I am your go-to in a crisis for sure. But there comes a time when it has a price. And it can it can do what they call somatize, which is show up in your body, right? Mm -hmm. Suddenly you have these weird allergies, or your stomach's all weird, or you have these strange headaches, or your your back, that one spot, or your knee just keeps doing this. And it's sometimes that somatization of stress. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can all relate with stress headaches, especially <laughs> uh the past two years. Yes. Man, we were sent to our rooms to check ourselves, and that was a thing. Yeah, I always I feel like, you know, the corporate in interests on the planet are they're no joke. They are a force. I remember, you know, I remember in the 80s, I was young, but I was looking around going, this is something's happening and it's not good. And we started to move into the 90s and I'm like, whoa, it's not the just the stadium anymore. It's the Staples Center. 
It's <laughs> not the music festival anymore. It's the, you know, the Amazon, whatever. Everything's branded. It's not cereal anymore. It's Disney or Marvel cereal. Mm -hmm. Like, and we're all getting branded. We're all getting sucked into that corporate zone. And I got to remember where I was going with this. Um, <laughs> What, what did you say right before that? Because it'll take me back to it. Um, gosh, I was so riveted in what you were speaking <laughs> about. And then I was thinking about that that new L.A. stadium yeah. that they named after a crypto, crypto.com. Yeah. I giggled yeah. thinking about that, that, wow, the future, it's really here. I think we were talking about toxins. Toxins and stress, really. And so, yeah. so much of what we are born into is run by these corporations. And we take it back by remembering what matters to us by remembering what we actually want because we're sold a whole bill of goods about what we should want and who we should be. And um, I'll find my earlier point later in the conversation. I know it'll come back to me. So what else do you have? Um, yeah. So I really wanted to, to take it back to, because you, you are clearly so you've done so much work to come to a place of what I can totally tell is so much closer to enlightenment than me. Oh, uh, how about that? <laughs> a lot of respect for you about that. Thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, has it always been that way for you? And, you know, it seems like specifically regarding your career, mm. did you, you maybe didn't always want to be a voice actor. Did you yeah. kind of stumble upon that? Totally stumbled upon being a voice actor. Singing was my first love, but my, you know, there's a, there's an Eastern religions tenant. Um, I believe it's the Buddhists who say you choose the family you're born into for what they can teach you. And I chose the very high challenge plan. <laughs> I chose the super high <laughs> challenge plan, you know, as several of us did, right? And I, but I, I really chose to, and we get to pick what we believe. And I know that sounds weird, mm -hmm. but you know, up until one of my mentors, uh, Jim Fortin, has an amazing podcast, the Jim Fortin podcast, that has been instrumental in my internal kind of healing up and transforming and stuff. And um, you know, he talks about subconscious programming, how we are programmed up until we're about seven. We're in kind of this hypnotic state and we just take it all in like it's real. Um, I keep losing my threads today. I love these tangents, but they're throwing me off. Um, and so I, I was programmed that never good enough, not okay. And the circumstances that I came through, the what I ended up with was a super, super deep, low level of self-esteem, low, 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 low self level of self-worth. And I was really fortunate to bump into a therapist for the first time when I was 19. And I did it for a little bit. And that's sort of been my pattern. I'll drop in when I need some lessons and then I'll go back into life. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm way off. And I drop back in and then I, you know, come and go. But I go at therapy like um, university. Like I'm, I'm here to unpack these bags for a purpose. I'm here to unpack them so I can repack them with better stuff and be on my way. Thank you. You know, I don't, I don't like to sit around and wallow in, in the past. It's useless except as a teaching tool. So I didn't have the confidence to pursue what I really, really loved the most. And mm -hmm. I did end up through the grace of the universe and of a lovely woman named Jane Trexel, um, to be working at a video production studio, which was right next door to an audio studio. And I went to a fine arts high school. So I was in Birmingham, Alabama, where I could talk without an accent because I was at that school because my mother was very insistent. So they would just run next door and grab me for spots. And I was blown away that they were paying me 30 or $35 to do a spot. And I took it on like a business. My, my second dad used to call me the little capitalist piglet because I was really money aware. Yeah. But the way that I was money aware was so specific. I've loved money forever, but it's so specific. I love the calculating of it. I remember going and budgeting to buy like string and beads so I could make macrame plant hangers and go sell them to people. And I put out like the, how much it would, the cost of each item sold, like I had it all laid out. And then I finished making these things and I was like, oh, just take it. It's fine. Just take it. Really? <laughs> that's, that's my flavor. I'm always like, oh, right. Yes. Um, so Do you like I, the actual detailness of laying out all the like charts, spreadsheets. Oh, my God. Person? It, it was 2016. I recognized what the desire that I had, the financial desire I had for my life, because I there's so many things I want to contribute to and so many things I want to do and and 
help on not help is the wrong word because people don't need help they just need support and contribution i want to contribute to on the planet that involve money that i was looking at my earnings especially you know as a woman which thank goodness that's changing but i thought there's a cap on that there's a cap on what my body can produce so i have a retirement fund i've been you know contributing to forever because my accountant said to do it and i agree and good and for I, you yeah too said absolutely That's having a having a retirement account is a strong start that's yeah. the first note for chat right now but the thing is this is a trick and this is something everybody um is empowered by being aware of used to be we used to have what are called defined benefit pensions and i guess i want you guys to just sink in for a second because this may be far in the future for some of you but it's coming it's coming and it's here for some of your parents. We used to have these things called defined benefit pensions, where you'd go to work for a company, you know, in the old days forever, and you'd retire and you'd get this much money a month when you retired. That's a defined benefit. And then in the 1980s, when everything turned upside down, the government changed it because people were paying lobbyists to lobby these people who voted on the laws to change the laws and they changed the laws and they made it a defined contribution. And all that means is whatever company you work for, there's a defined amount. They're just going to contribute to a fund for you. Have fun. Good luck. And what have you fun have, good luck. If yeah. that's not life's motto right now, right? the corporate motto. Um, and what, what used to happen was these corporations had staffs of people whose job it was to understand how to invest that money, how to make it grow so they could afford to pay everybody at the end of that term. And they just turned that money loose on all of us individuals. And we've never been taught what in the world to do with it. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, I was like, all right, I gotta, I, I'm gonna, I've been doing a lot of reading and I was like, all right, it's time, it's time. And I enrolled in a program where I learned how to syndicate real estate investments. So like everything involved in finding a property, gathering investors, doing it the right way, doing it within the law, doing it sustainably, like the whole nine yards. And I spent, in addition to my career, <laughs> a year plus, like doing this. And then I was like, all right, I, I, you know, I'm now at that. Then I became a single parent and I was like, all right, oh, I'm going to turn this over to my partners. But the point is I dove heavy into that spreadsheet side of my brain, into that detail side of my brain. And this, this has all been leading to this. Every single one of you out there, I want you to take a second and imagine what it would be like if we had a world where creatives, artists, creators, dabblers, hobbyists, all of us were financially empowered. Like we had understanding and we had money and we had confidence about it. Therefore, we participated powerfully in the power structures of the world we live in. What would that world look like? It would be cool, wouldn't it? It's starting. Cool doesn't even begin to describe what it would be like. I mean, that's that's describing a utopia. It starts with us. No one. This is the other thing. No one is coming. There's a mm -hmm. cape behind you. Just grab it, put it on, because you're your own cape, right? It happens in little five minute a day intervals, just five minutes a day. I, this morning I was like, all right, hold on, hold on. I realized that my phone has kind of with all the travel and all the sort of checking out over the last couple of weeks. And then I had COVID before that. And like oh, I, no. I've slipped into, ah, it's fine. I've slipped into some habits of just sort of staring and being passive and getting mm. hypnotized by the device. And I went, oh, and it's a process. It ta It's taking grit and rigor to like put it down and step away and create space. Cause for me, what happens when, and I don't know, it may happen for you guys, when that space is created, I find myself going, hmm, what do I do now? I, my, my muscle for self-direction in those moments was weakened. So I just pick it up and there's like 50 million things to do. Right. And sometimes I need a break, but I'll take my breaks differently. I will not take them in that thing. I'll take them somewhere else. Uh, that thing being my phone, I'm pointing to it. <laughs> no, <if I laughs> what you're worth, but Anyway, it's, and so the, come, that comes back around to this morning, I thought, you know what, there's one book around money that I'm going to pick up that would be really beneficial. And I have a group of friends and I'm like, you know what I'll do? I'll go into that group of friends and I'll read it out loud. If I commit to myself to read it out loud 10 minutes a day, that's how I best digest information. I'll record it for them and send it. And if it's useful, great. And if not, no worries. Yeah. There's so many different interesting concepts that just seem so natural to you mm -hmm. that I have picked out because I've, I have, I've struggled with these things. And I know a lot of people in the chat do as well, because we talk about it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. One of those things being creating space in the first place, yeah. 
there are so many things that take our attention that distract us. Notification pops up, notification pops up three seconds later, another one pops up three seconds later. There isn't any time anymore to do nothing for a minute. It doesn't exist anymore. You have to be purposeful about it. That's even that being the first easiest step is so difficult sometimes. Well, you know, speaking to motivation in this area, there are two factors that I, that I turn to for motivation in this area. One is my rebellious nature. Like I know love that here. Oh yeah. I mean, do you know what your number one commodity is that you have every one of us had uh, uh, possesses right now? The thing that the corporate interests want the most and oh, our attention. Yes. By creating space, you are pulling back ownership of your attention. You were then taking hold of your personal power in the tiniest of steps. And it doesn't feel like, yes, I'm strong. It feels like, okay, what do I do now? You know, boredom is a powerful state to put yourself in. And um, the second piece, and I got this from, from Jim Fortin again, is death. Death is an incredible clarity tool. Mm. I recommend using it all the time. You know, I was thinking about this. Um, I've got a, you know, arranging for, for my son's grandparents to come and visit. And, and I was like, okay, I'm busy. And I was like, hold on. You maybe have 15 visits left. Ugh. You know, when you frame it that way, right? Like given their age, given how many times a year you might see them. And that breaks down to so many hours. And that's how many days you have left. So I'm like, okay, I'll be planning that visit today, <laughs> you know? So when you look at your time, you're like, what matters? I mean, I got so busy and this was part of my earlier kind of clearing breakdown that I referenced earlier. My sister was just deeply valuable to me going through this process as she is through so many. Um, I found myself just having this awful feeling inside. And what I realized was, who I just wanted to make cookies for my kid because I'm so aware there are only so many springs left. There are only so many fall soccer's left. There are only so many first days of school left, you know? And and then it's gonna be back to meh. I, you know, my time is my own, great. But this is such a special, beautiful, precious thing, so. Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's super um, difficult for a lot of people because we, spend so much time avoiding thinking about death and avoiding thinking that life is short yeah. and that we really have to make the most of it. But that really boils down to prioritizing. You know, when it comes to motivation, a lot of people will say, oh, I just don't have the motivation to, for me, it would be edit this video, or I just don't have the motivation to, um, you know, write this email to a work colleague, whatever it may be. Well, why don't you have the motivation to do that? Maybe it's not a priority and maybe and isn't that okay? Yeah. And, and I think it's so important to check in with our individual alignment. Like you start yourself on a career trajectory and then you give yourself, there's that to-do list, especially if you're self-employed and self-generating all this, you give yourself that to-do list to get there. And sometimes you don't feel like it because Jesus, you just don't feel like it. <laughs> you just don't. And on those days you're like, okay, whoa, we got this, call a friend, do whatever you got to do, you know, do the five, four, three, two, one, whatever you have to do, just get through it. But Wait, what is the five, four, three, two, one? I think that's a, that's a Mel Robbins trick where she's like, okay, you're going to get out of bed in five, four, three, two, one, go, you know, and you just, that's go. amazing. It's a great trick. Yeah. It's I've Mel never Robbins. heard of that, but I do that when I have to get out of the shower Yes. when it's so yeah. warm in the shower, but it's cold <laughs> outside. Yes, I, I count down from 30. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's great. I'm so, I feel so validated. I'm not the only Good. one. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. She's got some great tips and you're absolutely right on. Um, but uh, also though, check in. Maybe it's not in alignment with you anymore. I found myself driving so hard and I couldn't get it done and I was beating myself up. And that's the crazy thing about judgment. Judgment clouds your judgment. <laughs> judgment it clouds does. your ability to see. Like I, it was Julie Nathanson, I think, who put it so beautifully, you know, and you see it in Ted Lasso as well. Judgment and curiosity cannot coexist. Like, why don't you swap out your judgment for curiosity? Judgment's a habit put in a new habit like okay why don't I want to do this I don't feel like it I don't want the same things anymore um these people are lovely but they're no longer my zone like we migrate through groups of people we migrate through phases in our life and sometimes they're just on the way to somewhere 
you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just part of the human experience. I, I could not agree more. And it brings up this, this interesting question. Um, you know, we call it judgment, but we also call it guilt because guilt is a self judgment. That's that self feeling of, wow, I, I should be doing this, yeah, but I'm not, or I can't, or I won't, but I should. Yeah. That's such a sticky thing. I mean, do you think that there's just no way you're going to motivate yourself if you're thinking like that? Well, you can't get a lot done because you're shooting all over yourself. Um, right. You know, there's this killer thing that I have. Um, I can't show it to you because it's on my computer. It's this wonderful um, funnel thing. I have it in my Patreon group and it's the vibrational chart of feelings and guilt and shame are at the bottom, you know, and, and willingness is way up high. Acceptance, just neutrality is higher than you'd expect. Um, I, I often say, unless you've punched somebody in the face, shot their dog or stolen their significant other, there's not a lot to feel guilty about. Guilt is honestly a waste of time, a protective mechanism. There something. you go. Yeah. It's, if you haven't punched somebody in the face, relax. Yeah. It's also, it's a, it can be a couple <laughs> things. It can be a habit. It can be something that was, you know, sort of shoved onto you from your family because that's just what people do. It can be something shoved on you culturally. It can also be an avoidance mechanism. Oh, I feel so bad. Then you don't have to take action. Then you don't have to move into boredom and just holding still. Like I maybe swap out stillness for guilt. Like whenever you feel guilty, just don't even analyze it. God, don't analyze. Just save it. Save that for the therapy couch. Like just <laughs> take your brain and go to zero. Just go to zero and just sit still. Stillness is so powerful. So powerful. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And um, it, it's interesting because I know that for me, that advice definitely resonates. You know, I'm an actor. My career is self-driven. I make my own content. Um, that's that's all these topics and conversations, all these debates I've been having with myself for 10 years. Yeah. Um, but I know for a very large portion of people here, they, you know, don't have self-driven careers mm -hmm. and maybe they don't feel like they have that much control over their lives. Well, what, what would you say to that? You have, oh, you're not going to like this answer. I, I think I'm going to like it because I won't like it. They, you're 100% responsible for your life. Mm. Once you hit the age of 18 and all, and try, I don't listen to me carefully. I do not say this from a place of, of um, lightness and privilege. I do not. I have had more than my share of trauma. Um, I have worked very diligently to learn from it, heal from it, et cetera. So I don't say this lightly. We are each 100% responsible for our lives. Now, we're not responsible for what we don't know yet, but once you know it, you are choosing every minute of the day. I've actually taken the phrase, I have to, out of my vocabulary, because I don't have to do anything. It's even, even feed my kid. I choose to. I choose this. I choose that. And I, I might choose to stick in something that I don't enjoy because I just don't want to choose doing the thing that's harder right now. I just don't. <laughs> But it starts to return your personal power to you, you know, and also part of it, you know, it's our responsibility, but it's not our fault. We are, we've been raised, especially millennials and, 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 you know, kids born after that, like raised in this branded world where we're brainwashed pretty hardcore and we're fed, you know, terrible information about what we ought to do with our lives. We're fed terrible information about the food we eat, the whole medical system's all jacked up, and we're separated from ourselves. So I think is if we slowly choose to step back into ourselves in a tiny way, and that, I know it sounds like a weird, like, how do I even do that? I'm standing right in myself. Like, <laughs> what do I actually want for breakfast? What do I actually want to do right now? If I put my phone down for three days, what are all these crazy feelings that come up? How do I take care of myself inside of that? And, or if I put my phone down for an hour, you know, oh, how do I get back to me? You know, do I want to make something? Do I want to sit around? Do I want to just nap? What do I want to do? 
like just tiniest steps just to reconnect to your actual self? That I can tell you is a terrifying thing to do. <laughs> it is so scary to listen to your own head sometimes. I mean, that it doesn't get scarier than that sometimes. Well, so I know there are various ways that I seek that courage to know that no matter what, I can handle it. I can handle what I'm feeling. I can handle what I'm thinking. I can handle the next day. Yeah. And I know, especially in the SRG community, one of the things that gives them that strength is playing video games yeah. and experiencing the stories of amazing people. Because when you're a gamer, you step into the role of the hero. Yes, you, you do. are the hero. And that acts as a sort of, it can act as a sort of lens that reflects back onto you. Yes. Um, it, it's, add, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I want to add one thing to what you were saying, because what you prompted me to remember this, which is one of the most powerful tools that you have. And honestly, I would venture to say this is a must do. I don't do that a lot, but the first stop in any of this is kindness to yourself. Your relationship with yourself is primary. If you get into that space and you're just suddenly feeling awful, tune in because your thoughts follow your, your feelings follow your thoughts. And before you felt bad, you were having thoughts. You just probably weren't even aware what they were. And quite often in our society there, oh, you're not this and you're not that and you don't have this and they have that and you really should have that. And, you know, like all this stuff. And I saw a great tip today, which is give that voice a name, you know, like, like mm. you know, Freddie, like, mm, not now, Freddie, you know, and, and remove it from yourself. And really, I think if, if we could talk about a utopia, if we could get to the state or as we move to a state where everyone starts to learn and understand how to be good to eat themselves, and this is different from selfish. This is just treating yourself with basic courtesy, respect, and care, you know, that will do huge things for the state of the world. If everybody truly just took good care of themselves, can you imagine? Can like, you imagine, SRG? Can you imagine if everyone <laughs> took good care of themselves? Yeah, yeah. Or just decent enough care of themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like think about those of you who have pets, like think about your pet. What would you say to your pet if they were having a bad day? Or if you have kids, that's a great one. Because I'll tell you something, your kids are not going to do what you say. They're going to do what you do. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for those of you who don't have either and are trying to find a way to like imagine caring about something in that way, think about a game you've played where there was an NPC who you bonded with and you really wanted to care about them. How would you take care of them? You know, what would you say to them? Say it to yourself. Yeah. That's hard too. Mm -hmm. All of this is hard. And so again, it comes back to, it comes <laughs> back to the how. And I love what you had to say about it. It, it comes down to practicing a little bit, five to 10 minutes every day. And slowing down. We get so fast in our habits and our roles. If you can just slow yourself down for a second, you have the, it creates that space where you can insert the new habit. Just slow it down just the slightest bit. Yeah. And I think that's actually a studied phenomenon too. That's one of the things that I've read in, in habit, habit books is is creating space in a pattern. Mm -hmm. So once you identify that you have a pattern, just put a little pause in in between one of the two of the steps. Yep. And yep. it's going to be so much easier to kind of just ease it apart over time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like like years ago, one of my dear friends looks at me, she goes, You have no gap. I was like, what is it? What is the gap? I don't know. <laughs> She's like, you have no gap. You just go. And there's no gap to like pause. And I was like, wow, there's a gap? People there can, can be a gap. <laughs> gap. Say more about this gap thing. <laughs> so, I just didn't know. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I'm, I've been dying to ask you is because you have this just incredible volume of work, there must be a particular character that stands out that inspires you that you've learned some lessons from. I know I've learned so much from Aerith, that it, it's unbelievable. The impact she has had on me, yeah, not the other way around. And so I wanted to ask you, what, what characters stand out as inspirational of the work that you've done? There are so many. I take bits from every one of them. You know, it's going to sound really weird and it's unexpected, 
but I'm uh, I'm the stunt double for Dory. Ellen does the films and I do everything else. And in studying her and studying that character, she blew me away. There's not a mean bone in her body, in that character's body. There's there's snarky and there's um, not even snarky. There's sarcastic and pff, fed up and all that, but never angry, never like pissed off at the world, like such a level of acceptance. I know it sounds like a funny thing to learn from, from a, a you know, a fish with short-term memory. A fish, but, yeah. Well, it's like Ted Lasso, right? I don't know, a Ted Lasso. I not. haven't personally seen it, but I've heard amazing things. Oh my God, Rihanna, you have, I, I, you don't have to do anything. I cannot recommend it enough. I've, I've, I will. I never know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to finish the rest of this convention. I'm going to go watch it because you told me to. <laughs> this convention will now turn to watching Ted Lasso. So I... <laughs> I've never watched a show twice intentionally. I just finished my third watch of Ted Lasso. Really? Yeah. I, for me, I found the writing was pitch perfect. The directing was quite flawless and the acting was just, oh my God. It's, and, and it's deeply kind. It's mm -hmm. deeply, persistently, doggedly kind in the face of a bunch of stuff that <laughs> doesn't necessarily appreciate that. And oh my God, it's my medicine. It's my medicine. So um, where did I get to? Oh yeah, he says to his players, be a goldfish. They have an eight second memory. Don't get stuck in your past. Get up and do it again. You know? <laughs> That's amazing. I feel like kindness is such a salve for the world right now. It's it, again, like really when you sit with that, what would it be like if everybody was good to themselves? You wouldn't be needing a bunch of stuff from other people. You wouldn't be mad at other people because they said this to you or did that to you because you have compassion and kindness for yourself. You go, you know what? They probably have stuff going on. They haven't told me. I know, but I don't tell everybody everything either. Like you have more room for everybody and everything when you're good to yourself first. You know, not above others, but like that's where you start. You don't, you don't ex give it to everybody else out there expecting that, hoping that maybe it'll come back to you. You've already taken care of it. You've already filled your own cup. So whatever comes in is gravy and it actually sticks. Because when you pour kindness into a cup that doesn't understand kindness, it just runs right through. Oh, that's so, that's so interesting. Um, I love the cup metaphor, by the way. I use it all the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I do think we seek a lot of external things to fill our cups when it really doesn't have to come from outside really kind of does have to come from inside. We've all had those moments. We've all had a moment somewhere, even for a second, where we felt really satisfied about something. And in that moment, we didn't need anything. Nothing. Ugh. You know? It's too, it's too much. I can't, a lot of people, <laughs> I know I'm not alone. I can't stand it. It's so hard <laughs> knowing that it's all in your control. And, and that's the hard thing. Like we don't want to adult. We want no. to, we want to like outsource that business and there's plenty yeah. of companies out there going, sure, send it to me, you know, and the price we pay, we can't see until we see it. And then we're like, oh my God, that was expensive. You know, we, we outsourced, we've outsourced critical thinking and information yeah. uh, filtering. And now we have what people call news that really isn't news. Yeah. Um, we've outsourced that and look what it's causing. A lot of outrage everywhere. People are so angry. They're reacting. They're being manipulated and they're allowing that. It's so hard. Yeah, it's I, so hard, I, especially, I mean, I could talk for days about how I wish media literacy was taught, but. Amen. I'm on that's not phone. what we're here to talk about today. <laughs> um, so along the line of, of challenges and when things feel really hard, mm -hmm. um, have you any, have you ever taken any inspiration from a, a character that was really difficult to take on? Mm. Hmm. Well, um, I think one of the most difficult characters I ever played was Electo in uh, one of the God of Wars and that she traded completely on her power and sexuality. Mm. And those were things I'm like, oh no, that's not my zone. And I thought, isn't that interesting? I've cut myself off from a whole lane over there, you know? And I would always get mad at women who did that. And the reason I got mad is I had no permission myself. I was like, huh, that's on me. They're just being them. They have a right to be who they are. So I learned that from her. And um, 
I come in with an enormous amount of dogged persistence. So that one I really didn't need to learn <laughs> as much. Um, grace, when characters have so much grace and forgiveness, you know, your Cinderella's and whatnot, I'm like, okay, yes, 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 yes. Or confidence, or, that was really helpful. You know, the characters along the way that were just like butt kickers and so fun to play. Yeah. Again, I'm going to take it back to Ted Lasso. There's a moment where one of the characters says to another, it's um, a woman that he's seeing and she's overwhelmed by everything. And she's like, you're just so wonderful. And she needs to take a break. And instead of crumbling, like so many of us do, he looks at her and he says, but I must warn you. She says, what? He says, I'm only going to get more wonderful. And, and he, he wasn't arrogant at all. He was just like, this is me. I do my best and it's kind of great. You know, and I was like, and you'd have to see the show, but he's not arrogant in the least. Wow. Oh, so I was just like, I want that. <laughs> I want that. Yeah. Right. I want to witness it. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty great. It's pretty cool. That yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm a big fan of your podcast. I've listened to every episode. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to ask, and, and the reason why I listen to it is for exactly all of the reasons that you said, um, in this world, maybe we wish it weren't like this, but in this world, money does mean power and it does mean influence. And listen, I'm here on this earth to make the world a better place. And if that's going to require some money, let's, let's go for it. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, so one of the stories that you told on your podcast is about how you wrote down all your goals on a piece of paper, lost that piece of paper, found it five years later, and then you had achieved everything on that list without realizing it. Mm -hmm. And you said it was because you didn't worry about the how. No. You just dreamed what you wanted. Yep. Hands off the how. Imagine you're going on a road trip with somebody and they give you the address and you plug it into your navigation. And you go, okay, I'm driving, rest. And, and you've really like rested up. You're ready to do all the driving for a few hours. And they keep going, all right, now, do you know which way you're going to turn? Do you know where you're going to go? Like, how are we going to get from here to there? Yeah. Like, it would drive you nuts. That is you and the universe. You have told the universe what you want. And then if they turned to you every few minutes and went, well, should we be going there? Do I have a right to go there? I don't know. You're like, oh my God, you're driving me nuts. You're pulling all my attention. You're pulling all my power off the road where I'm trying to get you where you want to go. So I started doing this thing called set it and forget it, which is where um, I say my goals and like, you know, we, we do this with the company. We set our goals and we just show up every day and do the work and take the steps and we check in. Are these steps still on track? Are these steps still going where we want, you know, to get us to our destination? Are there other factors that have come into the destination that factor in? Okay, great. Let's fold those in. All right, we'll drop these to-dos and add these. And okay, and we just we just check in. But how is none of your business? Because if if you're responsible for the entire how, you can only get done what this little body and these little hands can do, and this brain, this finite brain. If you release the how to all the forces larger than you, you have so many more assets at your disposal. And I'm a fan and um, a partaker and enjoyer in the concepts in quantum physics. I've just recently stumbled on this book that is really hard to read. <laughs> I think I'm maybe 25 pages in and I've been with it for three months. I'm like, oh, this is really it's a quantum physics book. You're reading a quantum physics well, book? Kind of. It's not really a quantum physics book. It's a book called The Non-Local Universe. And I'm trying to really read it and understand. So every page has little notes on it. I had to look up what that word meant again, because I think I know what it means, but I want to be clear. Sure. It could take me forever. But one of the concepts in it is that, and I, I don't remember the details, but I just get, I'm like, I got the idea. I don't need to prove myself or anybody. I'm just going to ingest the idea and move on. But the idea is that they did an experiment on two particles. They acted on these two particles. The two particles were then linked because they were in the same space. They separated them by like, I don't know, a few meters. And they did an experiment on this particle. That particle reacted as well. So they were like, what is happening? They did it again. And then they moved them like 11 miles apart and did it again. And the particle still responded. We are all connected because we don't know it yet, because we don't understand it yet, and we can't quantify it yet. That does not mean it doesn't exist. I look mm. at it like 
I've got this magnifying glass and it is showing me incredible things in this dirt and grass. Like there's bugs here and stuff. And, you know, I, I can see incredible things here in this spot, but I don't see them anywhere else. So they don't exist. You're worshiping the magnifying glass, not seeing what's possible in the grass everywhere, you know? So anyway, um, that's so interesting. Yeah. I, I remember learning about with quantum physics, how just the act of observing a particle can change its behavior called the double slit experiment. You can find it on YouTube. And how, do, how, how can, how can that be? Like, how can that work? It like works. is perception and a definable, a future definable energy in the universe is one of our laws of physics going to include our perception. Yes. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't with what we know, but we can't see all the colors. We can't hear all the sounds. What in the world makes us think we know everything? No, nothing. And what wonderful magic is possible when we surrender that maybe we don't. I was driving to uh, someone's house last weekend and someone else was coming to meet us and we were there as going to be there at a specific time because that's when they were arriving. And I literally, I got in my car, I pulled out my driveway and I went, oh, she's early. And I'm like, what? The person we were going to meet was early. And I was like, okay, I've, I've learned to just go, okay. And we got there and she was half an hour early. You know, it just happens. It happens to all of us all the time. And the more you tune in and listen to it and don't second guess it, there's a great book, um, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. No, Blink, Blink, different one by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, and in Blink, he talks about, you know, like that. And you can't, when you go back and try to prove why you know, you're mm. incorrect way more of the time than when if you just trust it and go, I know, which is different. You have to balance it. <laughs> My partner Bill's like an N of one is not a full experiment. You know, which I, is true. Yeah, you have to balance trusting your gut with also taking in outside information. You know, there, and there's a very different feel between what's your your busy mind and what's your intuition. Intuition is way quieter, always calm, always dead calm. So when you have random thoughts that jump in that aren't dead calm, that's not your intuition. Except for maybe when they go, go now, and you move the country, like me. <laughs> you moved to a different country for that, for that voice? Well, it was coming anyway. I knew that I was going to end up um, in um, in Canada for middle school for my kid. And I was sitting at my kitchen counter March 16th, 2020. And I had the, the what I had been keying into was something that had, I was born in Canada that would gently say, go home, you know? Mm. And I was like, okay. And February, it got a little louder, go home. And I was like, at some point I will. I, I have a lot of logistics here. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I'll take my kid and travel, whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And um, and that morning I was and it literally went, go now. And I was like, Jesus. All right. So I bought a ticket to visit my sister because my kid was out of school for two weeks, although I had a feeling it was going to be a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And I bought the ticket for the Thursday. And on the Wednesday, they closed the border up here to all but citizens. So we moved the next day. We were wow. already on the plane, so I just arranged, had a bunch of help to get my stuff up, and uh, um, there we go. I was just like, all right, I guess we're doing this, and it was all intuition, and that was the beginning of the time in my life that was one of the most difficult, because it, it was a very difficult adjustment to go from planning things and, and really controlling things and, and making things happen to truly letting go, truly just trusting my intuitive self over my 3d self as often as possible and well as it's as often as i decide right because i'm responsible i'm in control but when it speaks up i give it the respect of saying okay okay all right and such an interesting distinction too between specifically when a thought enters your head that is maybe like a little neurotic that definitely has fear attached to it that definitely is not calm versus a voice in your head that speaks calmly and firmly, because I know I have some trouble distinguishing between when something pop pops into my head and I'm like, I feel like that's not right. That's not the right path for me, but it is fear. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's probably why I started skills up is because I love learning so much. I took a course years ago about how to distinguish between the two. 
this woman in LA was like this, it was something around, you know, internal freedom and peace. And that was one of the things we drilled down on for a few weeks was like, okay. And we got really specific. What does it feel like physically for each of us? You know, where does it, does it feel like it comes from back here? Does it come here? Does it, and what does the other one feel like? What does the chatty one feel like? Get to know both of them so you can tell them apart. Yeah. Now that brings me perfectly to ask you specifically about skills hub. I know that one of the ways that people can feel more motivated to take something on is practice and learning. If you don't feel ready, find a way to get ready. Yep. So tell us more about skills hub. Skills hub happened because as you know, we used to audition in person all the time and then it became recording from home and then it became doing everything from home or now a lot from home. And I found myself going, I, I, I am in my own head. I'm just not feeling fabulous. And these are due right now. I just want 10 minutes with someone I trust. I don't have time for a six week course. I don't have time. I don't have enough material to justify paying somebody for an hour long private and then getting them booked and everything. That's not going to work. So my sister in her very smart way had a barbecue, invited her friend Bill, and I told Bill about this idea and Bill sat down and he did, I did many of them with him, but he did way more than me, over 50 hours of one-on-one beta testing with with coaches, with working actors, with people who just want to learn how. And we created Skills Hub and we have now 71 coaches. They're all wow. working actors um, We have or voice directors or casting directors directors or people who do all of the above. And Um, I browsed the website and you really do have some of the the best people in the industry. That's, I got very lucky. I reached out to my peers and and we're very specific. We vet every single coach who comes on. They have to know what they're doing and how it works is you can, you can um, book them by the minute. If you want 10 minutes, you can do it. All coaches have like a minimum. I think my minimum is 10 minutes. Some coaches might have five and they have a maximum. My max is 30 minutes and some coaches will do hours. I mean, depending on what you need, but it's great because what we also have and part of what's good for motivation is community. You know, we have an incredible community. We have our forum where everybody goes and starts these wonderful conversations. We have our resources. We have a whole bank of old scripts you can come in and practice with. And we built this thing. This was a suggestion from Jeff Burns, one of the wonderful members of our community. And he's like, you know how we would do workout groups after a class? Well, we built workout rooms. They're virtual versions of workout groups and they're free for our members. And you can just go, I want to do a workout room about, you know, this game or about a Shakespearean one, or I need to work on commercial copy, or I've never done an audition. I want to make a workout room and practice that. And it'll hold up to 10 people and you get in there and we have basic, of course, codes of conduct for everything to keep it all good. And people can go to the workout rooms and then we're working on a whole, um, like path for brand new people where people will be able to jump into a course to kind of find their way through their first few weeks. And um, yeah, we constantly take suggestions from the community and Bill is constantly building new things and it's pretty cool. It's um, yeah, the URL is acting.skillshub.life. It's not .com, it's .life. And um, it's, I'm really proud of it. I have to say I'm blown away by the way. We have people who don't live in LA who now have LA agents, you know, through the work that they've put in and the time they've put in on Skills Hub. We have people doing projects out of there. It's it's awesome. I love it so much. Yeah. That's truly amazing. I honestly have to thank you for building such a resource because <laughs> I mean, even I don't have a ton of experience voice acting, but I have worked a lot on a single project and it is, it is so hard. Yeah. It yeah. is, it is so much harder than anyone ever imagined it could be. (laughs) What makes a difference. Thank you for that. And I find it makes a difference because like mentorship is what you hear all the time. Get a mentor, find a mentor. Yes. It's really, you're like, but how? Right. It's really hard for people to ask for that. And it's also they're working people who would love to be mentors, but they don't have time. And that's one of the things I love about skills hub. You can come in and go, you know what? I'm going to have all these mentors. And I know I don't feel bad about asking them because I am compensating them for their time. And I know they'll be there because because I'm compensating them. They feel responsible and they feel accountable and they're happy and excited to be there to share what they know. And that's one thing I will say about all of our coaches. They have just they're wonderful people. They really know their stuff and they really care. Yeah. I'm so excited. 
Thank you. <laughs> like, I'm going to use it. Is that okay? I, of course. Can I work on all my auditions with you? Yeah, you okay. can come in. And this is another cool thing is like, we have a search filter. So if the person you want isn't available, you can just go, who coaches games? Who coaches animation? Who coaches this? And they're right there. And you can click on their, their name and it takes you to a whole page about them. And on that page, you see their credits, who they work for, the kind of stuff they do, their reviews if they've coached people. And if somebody you want isn't on this calendar, you can send them a special request. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really, really, really neat. Thanks. It's and fun. there's, yeah, that's a really important resource. It's, it's, it's almost like a, it's like the, the white pages of <laughs> voice acting help. I guess so. Yeah. I it's suppose. kind of amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really okay. blown away by it. I'm really grateful, really excited about it. Yeah. So we are nearing the end of our time. Unfortunately, it flew by. It yeah. just, it blinked on by. Yes, it did. Crazy. Um, but we do have a couple questions if yeah. we have time to get to them really quickly. I would love that. I would love From the that. chat that's that's watching live right now. Um, one of which I think is, is a really, really important thing um, that's hard. How do you balance the need to create space with the awareness of our limited time in this life. <laughs> that that's there's a tension there, isn't there? And we talked about doing both things, but the answer is in the space. If you mm -hmm. want time to suddenly expand in a weird way you had no idea it could, jump into the actual now. Wow. Jump into actual silence. Like give yourself 5 minutes of silence in the morning or in the evening or sometime during the day. Start with 1 minute it expands time. It's the weirdest thing. Like when you, you know, time both speeds up, but it also slows down. When you're actually in the moment, time does a weird thing. Try it. That's oh, such a good point. It's it's like time. I someone was like, but there's a paradox. And you were like, yeah, lean into it. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. <laughs> you want time you take time yes because it puts you in control when you're running around to all these things outside of you you're actually you're you're depleting yourself yeah. when you pull in and trust you step into the trust that all the things that are meant to show up will show up and it will all fall into place you can slow yourself down and you become more internally powerful it's beautiful all right one more question real quick how do you balance self-improvement versus self-acceptance? Again, we're giving you the tough questions. We're identifying the paradoxes here. You always want to constantly be getting better, but also you're okay just the way you are right now. What is this? I, and I want to share something contextually about all this. I know these answers and I also forget them. I will go mm -hmm. through my day and end up like, you know, chasing my own tail and someone in my life or something in my life, I'll go, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Reset the compass. We're all, we all do that. So just be, you know, give yourself that grace. So self-improvement and self-acceptance, honestly, self-acceptance is first mm -hmm. because if you genuinely, truly love and care for yourself, you can then turn to growth rather than fixing a problem. And that's not to say, that's just a general concept. In real life, we're like, oh, today I feel this way. Today, oh, wow, I was a turd and I really stepped in it. I will improve that right now. <laughs> it's not all one or all the other. You kind of take it in pieces. But I think the overriding thing, the most, again, it goes back to that kindness thing. Mm. You're kind to someone, are you always improving them? Are you accepting them and loving them exactly where they are? And then watching where they're internally motivated to go, I want that. Like I see myself going so fast. I want to take on slow down or I'm sitting around a lot. I want to take on get up. You know, not like I'm bad for sitting around. No, I'm just ready to get up now. Or I see that it can give me things that are good for my life. You know, that's amazing. So take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Take it in pieces. Such kindness, a beautiful message. Kindness and grace for yourself first. Read the That's word. <laughs> amazing. Um, just as a reminder, the um, Skills Hub link was posted in the chat for the live stream. So please do be sure to check that out. If you've ever been curious about voice acting, and I know a lot of you are, you've mentioned it to me before, you've asked me, how do you get started? That is a great, great, great resources. The white pages of voice acting. I'm going to be calling it forever now. <laughs> or if you just want to bump up your D&D &D game, you know? Um. Yeah. <laughs> how much fun would that be? Right. 
Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everybody out there. Thank you for being here. So we get to do what we do. And um, just thank you for being in the world. You are such a light. I am so grateful for the generosity to share that with us today. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great okay. day. Then you. we're going to head into a break and then our next panel, and we will see you momentarily.